Hey folks, JD here, and today we are looking at the unboxing and the assembly, well, sort of, of the Creality Ender, th Ender 5 Plus. So, uh, on Black Friday, I'm looking to buy a new printer. I've been looking to buy a new 3D printer for a while now. Uh, I've started really up in my game when it comes to modelling my own things and whacking up my own models on Thingiverse and, and really getting into it from the model perspective. Uh, I've, I've got lots to show you, lots to go into, lots of things you haven't seen yet that I've done. So, I'll get to that. But essentially, I wanted to upgrade my lowly old Ender 3 sitting in the corner there and I bought the Ender 5 Plus. Now I had this for an absolute steal of a price. Retail price here in the UK currently is about three, uh, is currently about 530 for the official Ender, Ender 5 Plus. I had this in a damaged box from Amazon for 248. Uh, I'm absolutely chuffed that I actually went for it and decided to take, to take a punt on it because for that price I don't think you can go wrong at all. Now setup for this was extremely easy as you can see it takes up a hell of a load of space uh, that's why I haven't done a conventional unboxing on this because really I didn't have enough room I'm in the middle of reworking this room as it is and trying to unbox this and, and film it and everything was just an absolute logistical nightmare which is why I thought I would show it to you like this so fully assembling it is extremely easy it went from being totally flat packed to assembled in 35 minutes which is a vast improvement on the Ender 3 the, the instructions for the Ender 5 Plus do you know what? They have been so, so uh, reworked. It's incredible. And I'm glad they have because the end of three, my main argument with that was that some of the steps were missing. The instructions, well, they weren't instructions. They were just pictures. They were two dimensional and it was absolutely awful. And that took me about three and a half hours to assemble. Um, and the end of five plus is literally absolutely fantastic when it comes to fully explana full explanations on the instructions. You even have full English on the bottom as well um, and it goes into every single thing. The, 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 the cable connections are a little bit confusing um, and it takes a little while to figure out exactly what is being pointed to but still once you've got yourself around that it's pretty simple. The hardest thing is leveling the bed. Now with the Ender 3 leveling the bed is pretty simple-ish. Uh, the Ender 5 Plus makes it difficult because see that glowing red thing on the side of the BL Touch? That is meant to automatically detect and help you level the bed. The problem is it's eight centimeters away from the nozzle and when it when it fully extends it's got a couple of centimeters on the nozzle so it doesn't really help you. I had to level this manually totally by hand and disable the auto uh, the auto leveling uh, procedure. Now that doesn't really bother me I mean this is just the first iteration of this Creality I've got uh, I've got a uh, they probably are going to alter where that sits. They're probably going to alter how it works and everything in, in subsequent releases. So I'm not too I'm not too bothered. I didn't buy it for that feature. I didn't realise it had it when I bought it. To be fair, so that's not the end of the world. So I think for that, you know, I'm really not that bothered. Once it was fully assembled and the bed was on, then I thought the next thing I would do is use the, the auto leveler and try and level the bed. Unfortunately, as I said, that didn't go according to plan. So I went back to basics. Fortunately, which is the bit of A4 paper, fortunately in the instructions it tells you exactly how to do that. The uh, AUX levelling, auxiliary levelling, and it tells you exactly how to do it. Now that's built in, perfect. For the Ender 3 you have to download a program, another uh, G-code from Thingiverse and set it up that way. Uh, but fortunately it's all built into the Ender 5 Plus. Once you've done that, then you use the auto leveling then and it should precisely detect where, how everything is being leveled. But as I said, that BL Touch, it, it doesn't measure the bed properly. It doesn't, it only measures four particular parts on, uh, say, the, foot, the, the, the front bit, the middle bit and the back bit. Which isn't, it only measures like two thirds of the, of, of, of the bed, which isn't precise enough. Now, what I've done here is I've self-leveled it and it has taken me a long time. I'm a little bit out of practice with this, uh, even though the self-leveling, or the, sorry, the, the leveling on the Ender 3 is a lot easier. It did take me a lot longer on here because of the size of the bed and, and everything else. And these bars, trying to look through these and trying to level, it does make it very, very, very difficult. 
Now, if there's one tip I can give you when you're self-leveling, and if there's something I want to say about the PLA that you're given, because you're given a 500 gram spool of PLA here, right? This is useless. This is awful. It's really bad. It snaps extremely easily. Watch it not snap now when I say that. Yes, exactly. There we go. Thank you very much, PLA. But literally, I have tried no end to get this to stick to the base, and it didn't. You can see all the offcuts in the bin. Literally, I took that off the spool, and I put my silk, which is what I, uh, which is what I sometimes use. I like different colours. I like different silks. And when I when I want to make a present for somebody, and when I want to say, for argument's sake, I've modelled a particular vase for a member of my family for Christmas, I wanted to to come out in silk. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna paint that. And I I changed over the spool for silk using exactly the same dimensions as I did on that particular free PLA, and it's sticking. It may not be 100%, I may still have a couple of adjustments to do, but still, on the, on, on, I know, most of it is actually looking pretty good. I got a couple of little bits around here, I'm going to have to alter the bed slightly, but I'm really happy with that test, and I'm 78% of the way through it, so that's not too bad, I'm quite happy there. All in all, my first impression, well, my overview, I'm not going to go into first impressions in this video, my overview of this is that it's very easy to assemble. It, uh, it, it, it is incredibly easy to assemble. The instructions are very, very good. Um, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be, but still, that's not the end of the world. The dual motors on the back actually really help on the Y and the X axis, really, really, really help with how moving that print head extremely smoothly. I'm very, very happy with how that works. You've got two, basically, you've got the two motors at the back there. You've got two little rubber conveyor belts here, which just pull back and forth, which ensures that, that print head doesn't jerk. It's a beautifully smooth movement. The, you, you, now getting onto the part of the, of the end of five plus, the bottom part there, when next onto the, the, uh, on, attached to the PSU, uh, essentially the uh, the menu system. It's all touchscreen, so it, it works extremely well. It's extremely easy to touch. You can alter every single thing apart if you want to put it into economic mode, if you want the fan on or off, the adjustments for the Z axis, as well as the print speed, nozzle temperature, and hotbed temperature as well. So many other things you can do. This printer has auto pause and or sorry, it has pause and auto resume. So if we were to have a power cut like we had a couple of days ago, if I'd have had this printer, then the uh, then the the thing that I was printing out in the end of three wouldn't have just failed. It, I would have been able to resume it. So fortunately, I'm really really happy so far with this, but I haven't really put it to the test. I haven't got to print out anything other than this big test circle. So I'm going to keep on playing with it, I'm going to keep on dialing in those settings and making sure that it actually starts to work properly and then I'm going to make another video then on my first impressions of it once I've got a print to show you. But I think the first thing I am going to print is going to be in this silk. I've got a few spools of this so I'm going to, I'm going to use this a little bit more I think and see exactly how that goes. But so far my plus points are extremely simple to put together, very very um, easy to use, nice touch screen, the, fir the Marlin firmware seems to be uh, a little bit up to date as well as version 1.7 on this. P PSU is nice and cool, is nice and quiet and cool as well, the fans work really nicely. There's a nice couple of, set, couple of millimeter gap between the PSU fans and uh, the table as well, which again is very very nice. The bed is a beautifully sized bed, really nice and large. And your print area as well, where you can see it's just over 40 centimeters. It's very, very nice. So I think all in all, first impressions, I'm very, very happy. But I'm going to take it a little bit further and see exactly, exactly what this can do. Uh, and then we will see a little bit later on exactly what sort of prints we can and what sort of quality prints we can have out of this. Right then, my friend. That's my overview for the time being. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope I'm going. I hope you're going to join me in the next couple of days and weeks as we keep on delving into this particular printer and seeing exactly what it can do. Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and ring that bell too. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy printing.